continue on section 20.4. Now we look at the first two examples about how to apply the, the convolution theorem. So the first example 20.4.1 is uh, calculating the electric potential, which is uh, by uh, ENM is given by this 1 over 4 pi distributed epsilon zero, but that doesn't matter if you use the some uh, whatever unit that get rid of the epsilon zero. So the charge density rho d cube uh, divided by r minus r pi. Right, so this is basically integrating the full uh, the Coulomb potential over volume and with a distribution of charge given by the density rho. Right, so this is of the form of a convolution. Okay, so um, you can say that uh, this one of a distance can define this f function. F r is just simply one over r. So it means that uh, one over r minus r pi is just f r minus r pi. Okay, and then and then uh, rho is just a, a function. So this means that uh, this is of the form of one over four pi. Just rho r pi then f r minus r pi d q r r pi. Okay, so this is uh, so by what we talked about last time that uh, by equation 20.47, so that equals to just um, the integration of the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform of rho that in a vector k and then the Fourier transform of f. So f, Fourier transform of f and multiply by the phase e to minus i k dot or integrating over the wave number space k. Okay, so that's a, that's a direct application. Now the, this function, one of our, the Fourier transform is the, this ft. This, uh, we have done that before. Let's look that up. There should be some we're in section 20.2. Um, so that is a thing is in equation 20.42. So 20.42. So the one of all the Fourier transform is given by in three dimension, two pi, theta three half, three half, four pi divided by k square. Okay, so now, so this is basically, it. this is basically this one, okay. So this means that uh, psi r would be just one of this factor two pi three half integrating of the free transform of the charge density and then phase factor i k dot r d cube of k divided by k square. Okay, so that uh, is another form. 
Now the integration instead of originally integrating in the physical space, now you're integrating in the case space, the wave number space. Okay, so uh, um, of course the, to get the result, of course you need to specify what the charge density is and what the free transform is. Uh, so one of these uh, integration may be easier to do than the other one. So that's the that's example for 20.41, so this is equation 20.80. Okay, so now from the 20.40, so this is example 20.4.2, this is example 20.4.1. Okay, so, and Basically, this is just to evaluate um, the so-called uh, overlap integration. So, and for us, we we'll, we we'll just treat it as uh, as integrals as a b is uh, integrating over two functions. You have a function phi a complex conjugate. A. Uh, minus uh, vector A, capital A, and phi B, uh, minus vector B, integrating over a physical space. Okay, the wall of integration. All right. So, and to get to the form of uh, a convolution, this is not exactly of the form of convolution, so we can make a little change of variable. So define this r minus a as r prime. So this can change that to this becomes r prime. Okay, so r become r prime plus a. Okay. So, and then we define the, the vector B minus A as R, so this, this becomes, uh, this becomes phi B, R pi minus R, integrating of a volume R pi is R, this vector R is B minus A, Okay, so that now this form is uh, like the uh, convolution. Okay, so this means that uh, you again using by uh, what you did before 20.773, 20 20.73, 20 72. This equals to this uh, the integrating the Fourier transform of phi a complex conjugate, which is in the case b, and then phi b uh, we're not using the same notation. Well, let's, let me use the same notation, phi b and we transform the multiplied e to the minus i k dot r dq of k. Okay, so that's just applying directly the, the, the theorem. Okay, now for our, the specific case of this choice of psi, so this psi, uh, if you call psi a goes to psi b, even or psi a star, complex conjugate of psi b equals to a real function e to the minus c, um, minus zeta, minus zeta, oh. okay. And so the free transform of that, uh, we we did that before. So the full transform of that again uh, is uh, what 
Mubako in section two, I guess so. Uh, something in equation 20.44. This is uh, so basically it's e to the minus z to the r transform to by equation 20.44 is one over two pi three half and then eight pi zeta over k square plus zeta square square. Okay, so this is uh, by 20.44 Forty-four. Okay, so now we have to uh, we have to free transform of both of these function phi. So we can substitute that into here. So then uh, this S A B will be equals to yep two of them. So we can get those factors that are not dependent on k outside of the integral. So you have five eight pi z square and the square of that becomes two pi cubic factor in the denominator. Now you integrate the volume integral of exponential minus i k dot o t q k and divided by k square plus z square square of that factor. The first could not square because you have two of them, it's become fourth power. Fourth power. Okay, and now this integral, it, uh, you can evaluate that, uh, the textbook do, did that using some result in uh, chapter 16 and chapter 14, I mean, we didn't go for chapter 16. So, uh, but there's another way to calculate that. I will uh, talk about that in the next video because it's already too long. I would um, show how to evaluate this integral next time. But, uh, but the result is that uh, this integral uh, you will show that this is just uh, after you do the integration, this is pi squared e to the minus z to o over 24 z to q, z to fifth power z to square r square plus three z to o plus three. Okay, so substitute this into that, you get the final result is uh, it pi, after you cancel all the pi, you get e to the z, z to o divided by three, z to cube, and then this factor Zeta square r square plus three zeta r plus three. Okay, so that's the final result, but um, that's just an example to, ch to show how you apply the conv convolution theorem to do this kind of integration. So we'll, next time we'll show how to evaluate this integral.